Hello everyone. We are here in Bedford, England, wow. in the home of David Litchfield in his workroom studio, his atelier. And, um, and I'm just so glad to have this opportunity to talk about the making of When the Sky Glows. Um, so we're just going to ask some questions and, and find out more. Fantastic. Um, all right. So David. Yes. Tell me about when you um, first got the story. What struck me most about the story was... Um, well, first of all, the sense of escapism it gave me that it was the whole thing was a journey around, you know, so many different locations, so many different um, varieties of sky and environment. Um, and that just felt very exciting for me. Shall I ask you a question? <laughs> sure, go for it. So I wanted to know where you, what, what inspired you to write this book. <laughs> I was trying to capture the feeling of when you see a rainbow, yeah. where it just feels like something magic has happened and you don't know how long it's gonna last. Yeah. And you're kind of like, <gasps> and um, you want to grab whoever's around you to be like, look, look, look. Yeah. So I wrote um, a version of that, which I actually oh, wow. printed out. It's called The Rainbow, 227 words. Look at that. Um, and Would you like to read us some? Uh, I'll read you the first thing. Clouds rumble, drops fall, puddles on the ground. We pull on our boots and run to play in the rain. One of the lines is nature puts on a sky show. Oh, I love that. And, um, and one of my writing friends, I think it was Julia Lawson, who's an excellent writer. Um, <laughs> she said, well, what other kinds of sky shows are there? Oh, this, this book just took on a whole new proportion because there are so many different yeah. kinds of sky shows. <laughs> how many drafts did, did you go through? I ended up having 11 drafts. <laughs> That's not even that much. You oh, know? isn't that? Oh, okay. No, well, I've, I'm, I've had somewhere it's like 30 drafts. Oh, wow. <laughs> Some of the early drafts were rhyming. Here, here's, a, here's an example. Wow. Early morning, first light, hello dawn, goodbye night, when the sky glows, sunrise. Which is sweet, it's a different <laughs> bug. So then I, I did a non-rhyming version um, that had more words. Uh, the stanzas were longer. And I actually worked with a freelance editor named Deborah Halverson, who's excellent. And she was like, this is a great idea, but too many words. <laughs> and she crossed out a lot of words. And that's how we came to the, to the version that, um, almost how we came to the versions in the book. Then there was, um, the SCBWI Summer Conference, and I signed up for a um, manuscript consultation. Okay. And I didn't know who I was going to be matched with. Mm -hmm. And I got, when I found out I was got matched with Andrea Welch, I was so excited. <laughs> Literally, my knees started to shake. I, mean. I started to feel my legs buckle under me because I knew that she'd be the perfect yeah. editor for this book and the kinds of books that, that she published and Beach Lane published we're just so perfect for okay. this. Um, so I went in and she said, I love this story. I'm actually going to nominate it for the Sue Alexander Award, which is um, a conference award. Right. And I was like, oh, that's amazing. She's like, if, if I was the editor of this book, I would do this. And she crossed out <laughs> one <laughs> phrase from each stanza. And it was already very short. Yeah. It was a very short, short text. And she crossed out a third of the text. And she's like, would that be okay with you? And I said, sure. Why not? <laughs> because I, I would, to have a book with Andrea Welch at Beach Lane, yeah. I'll, I'll do what she says. And so so then the text got even more spare, and, and that's the final text that um, that's in the book. Well, yeah, I, I think that must have been the version that I that landed on my desk. Yeah. And and so, um, did you have ideas in your head right away? Whilst I was reading it, I was making the sketches, basically, because it, it really felt like, you know, it's such a visual book. It's such a, it's almost like a cinematic book is how I see it. You know, these these vast kind of vistas and widescreen kind of looks at the world. Um, and, and I sent my sketches to Andrea. Um, we started putting together a plan about how it would work to kind of, uh, kind of 
cut your sentences in two almost, or your, your paragraphs in two. So the big reveal of each um, moment when the sky glows was on a new page. For me, that is just a wonderful thing about this book is that kind of moment of like, oh, wow. Well, you executed that so oh, perfectly you. because for each of those lead-ins, your image really does such a great job of dropping some hints yeah. without revealing what it's going to be, like the kids with the with the glasses, oh, yeah, 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 and and then yeah, like you said, to to open to that reveal, and each of your double spread reveals are so powerful and so impactful. Okay, what about just a quick explanation of the process? Okay, yeah. So you get the script and then... So I get the script. Mm -hmm. I always start with sketches. And then the next step is usually, and it definitely was on this um, book, is just kind of experimenting with different paints, different colours, different textures. Sometimes I'll go and take photographs. Um, and sometimes, you know, so, and I, I, I definitely used it, did it in this book, because I'll, like, I'll go and take photographs of like close up sort of trees and you know get the bark and the texture and stuff and um i'll scan them all in put them on my computer and overlay them sometimes and just sort of see what works and, just, and then the final thing i'll do is i'll use my computer and all the little digital wizards and fairies that are in there and they i'll kind of play around some more and kind of maybe add some more bits and stuff and um i also uh, have got on my computer I've stored some of my own um, my own textures that I've made throughout the years and some of them go back quite a while some of them go back to when I was at school and there was a piece of artwork which I did actually use in in this book which is a piece of artwork I, I, I had when I was about 16 maybe even under 15 of like some clouds and things and I, I, I decided to use it in this book um which is not unheard of like a lot of the art because I, I I'm just one of those hoarders as particularly when it comes to my artwork is I'll just keep sketchbook mm -hmm. so a lot of kind of different stuff goes into this and different materials different different textures and so forth and then I'll, I'll basically put them all together in this big kind of pot on my computer and just experiment with them really um, and how, what kind of research do you do? To... Well, research was, uh, it was quite important for this book because having not been to many of the actual locations in the book um, or, you know, witnessed things like, as just, like you said, fireflies and stuff. I've not actually witnessed those in real life. I'm quite old school, so I still have lots of books and kind of encyclopedias and things. And I'll, I'll generally spend a bit of time flicking through them and sort of looking at, you know, atlases, especially for this book. I'm a big fan of David Attenborough documentaries, which is quite handy for this one as well. So, so yeah, inspiration kind of it's comes so cool. from everywhere. Inspiration comes from, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, no, I, I love that about my job that I sort of have to become, even for a short period of time, a bit of a mini expert on stuff. And then invariably I'll go on to another book and all that information disappears. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> like, I really... I was like, this time I'm gonna learn why yeah. rainbows. I'm gonna I'm gonna learn how rainbows work because yes. it seems like magic and a mystery to me. Yeah. And I learned so hard to write yes. that one stanza. <laughs> if you ask me how to make how rainbows work, no. I still don't. I still don't understand. No. <laughs> what do you hope um, readers take away from this book? I really hope that the readers of this book take away um, just the wonder and the magic that kind of exists in this world and. Um, and that can be kind of regardless of where you live, really. The, the dedication I had at the start of the book um, is for my teacher, my art teacher, Mr. White. He, you know, he very much uh, made us kind of appreciate, you know, the, the poetry and the beauty that was was around us, whether we was in just like, you know, a field in Bedford or where we were looking at some old ruins or, you know, just look at how, how each object in each tree, how the sun would capture it or how you know that a sunbeam would go through the leaves and stuff and you know that's that's a lesson I very much have tried to bring into a, not just this book but all of all of my books that I've illustrated yeah yeah I 100% agree that's what I love about this book is there's exotic places mm. you know uh, with volcanoes and yeah. icebergs but then they're just looking out your bedroom window yeah. and and that's accessible to everyone so. yeah David, this has been such a treat. It's been a crazy uh, two days of traveling from LA to London to Bedford, England. Wow. I still can't believe I'm here. 
I thank you so much for okay. just opening up your home and your work process and everything to me. Oh, it's been a pleasure having you here. Thank you for coming. Thank Lovely you. to see you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>